Cover up. Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is a good God. And again, I must not um, start without thanking Brother Patrick. Amen. Amen. You know, Brother Patrick, um, can somebody bring a, can somebody put that picture, the picture of uh, the evangelism that he gave to us? Can I will put it on the screen? Uh, that's fine. I will send it to you, okay? Okay. Yeah. Praise God. You know, uh, Brother, how is this evangelism um, instrument? 2000. And then he says, about 2,000 pounds, and I, <laughs> I scratched my head and I said, okay, then. praise God, Hallelujah. and I say, here we go, amen? amen, and then, before I finish that, she said to me, no, 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 I'm gonna, as far as it's gonna be used to the glory of God, as far as it's gonna be used to every day to go out and preach, he says, I wanna do that for God, Hallelujah. amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, I'm going to give it for the work of uh, God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, and I said, but you know, Ralph, I'm living back in, I'm living in uh, what I'm still so. Um, I evangelize in what I'm still. Ralph, I'm evangelizing back inside and everything. We only come together on Saturdays, these days. And then he said, oh, I have two. I can give two. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And he said, I can give too. Amen. Amen. And even if we can get someone else that will be going for evangelism, not for you to give it at home as fancy, that will be going for evangelism every single day or two days, three days, four days a week, because he's the one that, by God's special grace, is technical. He is technical. He's the one that do all that. Amen. Our God is good. Isn't that, isn't that great? Yeah, wonderful. Amen. So we have these wonderful tools. Jesus is Lord. And these tools have got a pulpit there. And it's got umbrella as well. So when it's raining, when it's whatever, raining or hot or amen, it's got it. And it's got microphone. And it's got everything. Speaker. Mm. You've got public address system. It's hidden at the back. When you are preaching, it's like the police or whoever, they will take you, well, where is it coming from? They will see where it's coming from. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, yesterday when they used it, it was so perfect. Everybody was, you know, people going, you know, today we took it to Stratford there. You know, a lot of people are taking pictures of it and it was so good. Amen. Amen. So, look, this is great. This is so good. And you know, one thing is, when you are giving to God, God gives back to you. Oh, yeah. Amen. That is one of them. We are looking for one of the chargers. And I said, okay. And then I said, give me the, um, because he gave us one charger. We couldn't find one. And he said, that charger is 70 pounds. And I said, okay, I can, I can be able to do that. I transferred the money to his account, and Brother went there and he said, Oh, I found it. I found that charger. I will bring my I transfer money back to the account. Wow. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And somebody give Amen. Jesus a clap for a friend. Amen. 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 Our God is a good God. Our God is a good God. And indeed, he transferred the money back to church accounts. Amen. Amen. So he's not doing it because you want to make money. But he's doing it because you want souls to be win. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So I told him that every soul we win is part of it. Yeah. Amen. Whether he go with us or he didn't go with us. Amen. If we win one soul, he's part of that one soul. If we win ten souls, he's part of that ten souls mm. that we win. Mm. Our God is good. Give Jesus a clap of Amen. 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 So now, we are equipped. We have to go. If you want to be going to evangelism every day, every at least two times a week, three times a week, four times a week, he is ready to do one again for us. Amen? Amen. So, but it's not gonna do it for you, you keep it at home. No. If you don't want to go evangelism, please don't even try. Amen? Amen? So this is the time. And we can see that evangel we need evangelism. We need to preach. We need to go there and tell people about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
We need to get there and get the people that are looking for a true place of worship. Amen. And then when you go there, you will see many people giving their life to Jesus Christ. There is a lot of testimonies that we have here. If we start to give the testimony, we are not going to get into our message today. But I pray that one day, it's going to be one, one day it's going to be for testimonies, evangelism testimonies. You will see how many people give their life to Christ and how many people, you know, know something about Jesus Christ and they see that we saw how God is making it grow. Because we saw the seed, but God gave it growth. Mm -hmm. Amen. When we go to evangelism, we saw seed. The Bible says some fell in the rocky ground, some fell in the, uh, among tongues, some fell uh, in the pathway, but some as well fell in a good soil. So when you are sowing the seed, some of them, some people will come and even tell you off. Tell you to stop, stop, stop. You will see some other religion, they will mock at you. But all those things, you don't need to listen to them. You need to continue to sow the seed, sow the seed, sow the seed. Amen. Amen. Remember one sow the way. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose one soul? One soul is bigger than the whole world. Can somebody say amen? amen? One soul that come to Christ is bigger for Christ. That soul is bigger than the whole world. So what, what shall it profit us? So let us give the word of God. Let the word of God be the most important thing that we give out. Amen. So I want to thank God today. Today is our deliverance service. We're going to do deliverance today. And our God is so good. Our God is faithful and just. And I pray that every one of us will be delivered. Amen. Amen. Today, in the name of Jesus. Every one of us will be delivered from whatever problem, from what anything that puts you in the bondage, anything that is withholding you, Anything that's not allowing you to move forward. Amen. We're going to break that yoke. Some people today, they walk, they do everything, they toy. At the end of the day, they don't get nothing. Something is withholding you. Something is pulling you back. Some people are caged. And some people are put into the grave that you do not know. Some people have been swallowed up. By the power of darkness. But you, you, you be existing, walking, but you are caged. But today, Jesus Christ says, the word of God says, I will open your grave. Amen. Amen. Says, I will open your graves Amen. and bring you out of it. You know, there is one of our brothers that came for prayer. And as I was praying, and the Lord opened my eyes, I saw him caged. And I said, Brother, you know you're in cage. You are caged. He said, No, I'm free. I can do everything. I said, No, you are caged. And that's why you're not making any progress. Amen. Amen. And one day we are praying, he keeps coming, we are praying, we are praying, we are praying. I saw him coming out of cage. And then he was delivered completely. Amen. Amen. Our God is a good God. Amen. Amen. So I tell you now, some of us, as we sit down here now, some of us are caged. But by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to come out of it today in Jesus' name. Amen. The name of God is a strong tower. It's very, very powerful. Mm. And our God is able to break every yoke. And I would like us to take our reading from Hebrew chapter 2, from verse 14 to 18. And the Bible says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. See, through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. And the Bible says, verse 15, And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. 
For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behaved him to be made like unto his brethren. Jesus Christ was made like you and me. That's what the Bible says that Jesus Christ is man, God, son of God. Remember the Bible says, for unto us a child, a son is given and a child is born. He took two parts, a child and a son, and God, and he will be called mighty God, and his government shall be upon his shoulder. Everything was explained to us in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It was explained to us that he's not going to only be man, but he's going to be God, and his government will have no end. Every man government have an end. Every government have an end. Every dominion have an end. But the Bible says that the government of God will have no end. And that's why he is God. You know, when you go to evangelism, the most likely question that the Muslims will ask you is, how do you say that Jesus Christ is God? But well, I will always tell them that is not righteousness. Let us talk about righteousness, can't we? Amen. Even if you know that he is God, or you do not know that he is God, that will not take you to heaven. What will take us to heaven is righteousness, a pure heart. How about your life? And some of them said to me, you better convert and then God will forgive your sin. And I said, wow, that's so good. So those that are converted are forgiven. The same says, I said, what about if they, if they are converted and they are throwing bombs upon bombs upon bombs, and he'll come to me and say, Listen, oh, do you say all Muslims are uh, terrorists? And I say, you just said that. I didn't say that. I'm just telling you. I've seen many of them that are converted and they're throwing bombs upon bombs. If you are converted and cleansed and, and you are forgiving, will you continue to throw bombs and start to kill people? No. So all these things is the thing that you're going to see. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ takes the form the form of man, he become man, he become God, he become the spirit himself. Because he has the spirit when he came, Jesus Christ has the spirit in him. The spirit could not, you know, go into the disciples because Jesus Christ has the spirit. And then he said, when I, will, when I go to heaven, when I finish with it, I will send it to you. Amen. That's what he said to them. He said, the comforter. When I finish with the comforter, I will go. Because Jesus is with God, the Father is God, is the Son, and is the Spirit. He says, when we finish, we'll go, we're going to go back. Then I will send the Spirit to you. And then Jesus Christ went back. And he sent the Holy Spirit in the form of fire and tongue of fire. And one, one, one sister said to me, I, I read Bible and I read Quran. Um, that Bible says that Jesus Christ is going to send another uh, spirit and another a comforter. And that, 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 that one is Muhammad. I say that's not true. I say read as of the as of that book, chapter 1 and 2. Then you will know that spirit, that spirit has already come before any other, any other person. You may let Jesus Christ go. He tells his disciples and says, stay in the upper room. He said, stay there. I will send for that spirit. That spirit came before Muhammad or before any other person. So what I'm saying, why I'm saying this is, the Bible says he did not take the form, did not take the nature of angel, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things, it behaved him to be made like unto you and me. And this take us back. To verse 14. He said, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death, that is the devil. Because we are both flesh and blood. Then he went, he took our form. He took the form like you, so that he will suffer. When you suffer as you do, he feel the pain that you feel. So that he can be able to deliver us. Amen. Amen. Because if he don't do, if he come as a spirit, spirit doesn't take any pain. 
Amen. Spirits have got a different body. The body of spirit is called the celestial body. So the celestial body, that's why when you are sleeping, you will see the demon will just come in if you don't have the fire of the Holy Spirit. You just come in. You say, where do you come? I locked my door. Did I lock this door? He locked it up, but he has got a different body. That's why it's coming to anywhere. And that is why you're going to challenge the power of darkness by the Spirit of God. Amen. 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 You're going to destroy the darkness. You're going to destroy the demonic forces by the Spirit of God. Our God is a good God. I always challenge people and I say, you believe that there is demon, demonic forces? He said, yes. I said, then why can't you believe as well that there is Spirit of God that will destroy that very demonic spirit. Yes. I just want to, I just want something to, to be in our heart today. So that you're not going to be afraid anymore. Because we are going to destroy every kind of form of fear. Because the Bible says that those people that Jesus Christ come to deliver, verse 15, He said, and deliver them who through fear of death what brings death? Fear. You go to hospital and they say to you, some people go to hospital, healthy, no problem. And they say to them, oh, that is cancer. Brrr. He cannot walk again. Why? You've been walking like that for 10 years, for 20 years, and the doctor told you that is cancer. Brrr. Straight away, that person died. Why? Fear. Fear from the Bible said, Fear not, for I am with you. Amen. Amen. So people go to the hospital and they say to you, You have tumor. Boom, boom. Fear. No. Today, the Bible said, Jesus Christ has come to deliver us from the spirit of fear. And fear has got torment. And fear brings um, uh, anxiety. And anxiety grows to bring depression. You know, that's one of us said that we used to come to church here. And I said, why, do you, why are you depressed? I'm, I'm, I'm scared of what tomorrow will be. But my children, oh, my children, I'm scared of what they're going to be. I'm scared of, I said, so if that is all fear. He said, yes. She's depressed. And she, when she's walking, you should be just like talking like, you know, all these mental issues. There's depression. People will be going and talking. Fear. So Jesus Christ says that the Son of Man come to destroy those that are true, to destroy fear that put people into bondage. Because fear puts every people into bondage. Once you are afraid, you go into bondage. I tell you, if you see demon in your in dream and then you run away, the demon will start to chase you. Amen. Amen. Anyone that have run away from demon here? <laughs> Don't run away from demons. Stand. Yes. Amen. Amen. Stand in your feet. Stand in the name of the Lord. Shout Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire. Amen. The demon will be consumed. Yes. Amen. Amen. You try this. If you have been scared in dream, go to the bed. Equip your spirit and say, I will not be afraid. If they come, if any demon come, if I hear any noise, I will shout Jesus. You will see, they're not going to come that day. They will wait until when that fear, when that, when that zeal is gone down, they will come and push you. Amen. 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 They will come and push you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Our God is a good God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So the Bible says, uh, uh, verse 18, it says, For in that he himself that suffered being tempted, he is also to secure those them that are tempted. He has been tempted, so he is ever ready to deliver you. That's why we are having deliverance today. Amen. And then if you go to Lamentation, chapter 3, from verse 22 to 23. Lamentation chapter 3, and it says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fell not. They are new every morning, great is thy faithfulness. 
the steadfast love of my God never ceases. His mercy is never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, great is thy faithfulness. Sing one more time, thy steadfast love. Next month is called what? 
meditation. Hallelujah. Somebody shout out big amen. Amen. He says, chew it. Meditate in the wall. Chew the wall. Grow in it. The Bible says, so grow the word of God. And when the word of God grows, what is it? It prevails. See, the word of God grows. And when the word of God grows, the word of God prevails. That's what the Bible says. The word of God grow and grow and grow. You meditate it. You understand it. You know, when I was meditating about prayers, I give you this testimony. The Lord said to me, God, a boy. You got a boy. I said, God, why should I boil over? He said, You're going to boil over in prayer. Because when you boil over in prayer, when you boil over in prayer, devil cannot drink you. We're not going to be any more food for devil. A hot, nobody eats hot food. When it's too, when it's going, when it's boiling over, you don't come put your hands to eat it. Amen. When the hot water is boiling over, you cannot drink it. So when you are boiling over in prayer, devil can never ever drink you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Devil can never ever eat you. Mm -hmm. Devil can never ever come to you Amen. and 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 harass you. No way. So today, what we're going to do? We're going to lift up our heads. Because Bible said you are gate. You are everlasting door. We're going to lift up our heads high, higher. Because that the King of glory is coming. When he see you like a lion, when he see you like a strong man, he will come in. But when he see you as a coward, you will hide out from devil. Hiding out from devil. You are hiding from devil. You don't want to mention the name devil. You don't want to destroy the, the demon. Oh, don't, don't you do that because if you call that, they will come over. They will come over. <laughs> no. no! Hallelujah. Can somebody shout, no! No, way. no way. Jesus is stronger. Yes. Yes. Jesus is mighty. Yes. Yes. He says the, the, the mighty God, mighty in battle. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. He said, the Lord that serving is the Lord that is strong and mighty. The Lord that serving is the Lord that is mighty in battle. He fight the war. He told Jehoshaphat, says, you don't need to fight. Don't worry. I am in God of war. I will go. I am going to fight the battle. Yes. And somebody said, God fight for me. God fight for me. So all you need to do today is just to believe. Yes. You got to believe. And let us leave the battle for the Lord. Yes, and the Lord is going to fight the battle. Yes, and you will be delivered. Yes, and you will be set free. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, the battle belongs to the Lord. Have you heard that word? That the battle belongs to God. Yes. My battle belongs to God. My victory belongs to God. My battle belongs to God. In the name of Jesus. Shall we stand up now and begin to go into the power of God? Our God is a faithful God. You gotta believe it. You gotta take it in. We have got four different deliverance to, to organize today. One, we are going to organize deliverance from flesh, flesh and blood, from sin, from sickness, from diseases, and from infection. Amen. Amen. We are going to do that. But before we do that, we are going to 